geared for you to think. For you to think. For you to think. For you to think. Hello, everyone. Episode five of Between Two Ovaries. You are here with us. You are in good company. So thank you for coming and hanging out with us. This is Venus Creciente. Is it Doris back? Yes. I can't I... believe we're on episode five. Right? As challenging as it has been, it's been part of my self-pleasure to be able to record produce and edit episodes for this beautiful podcast creative baby of ours and I just want to honor you around that because you really put so much love and time and energy into this and I'm so grateful for you and just appreciative of the womb work that you're doing around this podcast so thank you my love Mm, thank you thank you and I thank you as well for putting in the time to situate your children to record with me because it's I've realized it's not easy to have a co-host and I'm not saying that in any way shape or form against you or anyone that has a co-host it's just really aligning your schedule like our schedules to be able to record yeah It's tricky. It's totally tricky. It can be very challenging. And I just love our partnership and how we give each other love and grace. And I would imagine in other dynamics that could cause like a a wedge or a rift, but we just flow so beautifully together. And yeah, my, my life has been a little crazy lately. And so I appreciate you just rolling with me through that. And I'm just so excited to be back here and it's really like this is almost therapeutic for me in a way you know when we get to sit down and just open our hearts open our wombs and just speak freely of what we're feeling is just I leave these sessions with you feeling so good and I'm a brighter light for the world Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I love you so much I love you and I love that it is therapeutic to be able to speak our truth and forget about the world around us. It's been fun. And a shout out to Feralina for joining us last episode and stepping in as an ovary and being our first guest. So thank you. And thank you so much to our listeners who've provided feedback. Shout out to Amanda, who's given me such valuable feedback. Michelle, you are amazing. (sighs) Shannon, these are some of the people, some of the women who have reached out to us with such valuable feedback that fill our womb spaces with so much love and passion to continue doing this podcast. So thank you. Thank you for all our listeners who haven't reached out yet. And I hope that one day soon you can join us on our podcast as one of our guests to share your own story. It's been so beautiful hearing people's feedback and just their excitement around this podcast. I mean, just the handful that we've gotten, it just like motivates us so much to just keep doing what we're doing. And it makes it, you know how like sometimes it feels like we're just talking to ourselves, but now we know we're a community and even though we're not speaking to all of these people live, I can feel the energy there. And I'm like, we're in this energetic conversation almost. It's really fun. Absolutely. And I know I, I get redundant because I love expressing my gratitude and my love for you all. You, Isadora, Feralina, and the rest of our collective. And yes, you as our listener, you are a part of this collective. And you bring something to our womb space here by simply listening to us. I'm excited for today's topic because it's really learning to have each other's backs as women instead of being in constant competition with each other. And Isadora, I would love for you to introduce the topic because you brought it up and I think it's a very potent topic to explore. Yes. So today's topic is about, I'm just going to go with the words that are popping into my mind, deep radical immersion in feminine culture. And what that means to me is at the beginning of this year, I read the book Cunt And for whatever reason, I always blank on her name. I need to like write it down and post it on my wall. There's a chapter in that book where she talks about how 
our culture is so, I'm trying to think of the right word. I'm in pre-death phase and my brain is just mushy right now. So we're overrun basically with masculine energy in our culture. And that is in regards to media, music, books, television. Women are definitely becoming stronger characters through all of that. But she really just talks about putting time and energy into supporting and filling your life with females. And so she dared her readers to, for one year, only read books by women authors and only listen to music by women. So I took that challenge on and it's been really magical and really fun. And it has shifted my perspective and my energy so much. So we're going to dive into that today because I know it can sound a little off-putting and scary and like, what? What are you talking about? And so I just invite you to open your mind and your womb and your heart. And I think it's going to be a fun thing for us to talk about and explore today. So fun. You read Cunt before I did. You recommended the book to me and the author is Inga Muscio. And I remember because her website is Inga La Gringa. So I remember you mentioning that you were taking on the challenge of only listening to female everything, just Im immersing yourself in that culture. And it sounded really bizarre. It sounded very difficult. I love Jason Mraz. He's one of the ones I miss the most. Not saying that I don't allow myself to listen to his music, especially because he just came out with an album. Jason Mraz, hit me up. But as soon as I read Cunt, I completely understood where you were coming from. And I was so fired up to immerse myself in that, in just the feminine divinity around us. And it made me realize how disconnected we are as women because we're constantly trying to compete against each other. And things just started clicking. It started feeling good to only listen to females, only read female words. And it sounds maybe if any males are listening to us, It may sound like we're discriminating against males, but in reality, we've been surrounded by all of this masculine energy all of our lives. As women, we're 30, 30 years of pure masculine energy. Of course, you know, Spice Girls, what's up? But like nothing consistent throughout our life. And now switching to only female everything, it brings this new feel to it has brought this new feel to my life that I feel I've been missing all of my life if that if that makes any sense it always makes sense so when you brought up this topic yesterday last night I was struggling or was being challenged with putting myself back in the headspace of the feminine only the feminine because as of recently I've completely invited the masculine energy whole womanly back into my life and it's been interesting to try and balance the yin what is it the yin and yang energies again because I was very heavily in the feminine energy up until maybe three weeks ago and I didn't want anything really to do with males I felt unsafe around males and very very critical of male energy just to give you an example late last year in the school year my son's school predominantly women teachers, staff members, I think there's only one male. And so one of the teachers retired and the new teacher coming on is a male. And I had a fit. I had a fit because I'm like, I don't feel comfortable. Automatically, I put him in the box of bad energy. And now I'm happy to say that I've kind of shifted the perspective a little bit around men because my husband and I are doing a lot better. And I feel safe with the, the masculine energy again. So putting myself in that headspace was interesting last night. What helped me was realizing that you and I haven't really touched base because of how crazy our life has been. And that's only been in maybe a couple weeks. I mention all of this because I want to thank you for bringing this up. And I think the universe always conspires in our favor. And it's proof that it, it does because it's bringing this topic to my life at the exact moment I need it. And I feel like as much as I'm passionately in love with my partner right now, I do feel like I need the retreat with and the reflection and energy from my sisters, especially my 
life partner soul sister and that's what I wrote you as in my journal that you are my life partner soul sister and thank you thank you for being who you are and what you bring to my life and this podcast (laughs) I love that you said all of that and I love that you brought it up my womb space got all tingly and it was kind of bringing up some emotion for me because it's crazy how much you can evolve in such a short period of time. In February of this year is when I read Cunt and then I just dove in head first, womb first to the feminine culture. That book just kind of flipped my life upside down. I went through a period where I almost regretted reading it because like you said, I just created this massive hostility towards men in general, and it put a weird wedge in my relationship. I love the cycles because I'm in my pre-death, and last cycle, I didn't give myself the time or energy, and I was wondering how it was going to affect me in my upcoming cycle, and now I'm seeing it. Okay. Yeah. So... I love it. (sighs) Therapy. So I feel like I remember us having this conversation around, (laughs) I think we text each other a few times, uh, like with this almost rage against our partners, like they would do things and we would just be like, blah, like what the fuck, you know? But I feel like now that I'm in a different place, reflecting on that, I feel like it was generations of crap you know generations of this overtaking of masculine energy and women not living and honoring their feminine energy and it just made all of that rise up and that was how I handled it and processed it and I'm so grateful for my partner for just being there and being confused and it was a crazy few months but he just like is riding it out with me and I'm so grateful for that. But yeah, this work of diving into who we are, connecting like next level with our womb and our cycles is not what people do right now, you know? I mean, the majority. And doing that work, spreading that message is really deep, powerful work. And that usually means it's gonna get fucking messy. But if you can embrace the mess and feel through it, like I'm feeling through it now, like I thought I was past all of that, but healing isn't linear. What? It's just like so beautiful and magical and raw and real. And that's what I crave. I almost feel like I'm addicted to self-growth. There's an opportunity there to grow and like learn and evolve myself even more. Like I am in it. I am like sprinting towards it. So it can be a wild ride for my kids and for my family, but it's what I have to do. I just feel so deeply called to it. And so this work has just been really, really magical. And I don't, I said, I almost regretted reading that book, but at the end of the day, I don't because it was work that needed to be done. It was growth that needed to happen. And it's amazing. Man. Whoa, man. Uh, Whoa, man. (laughs) It is fucking messy. Thank you for holding that space for me. Oh, man. It was beautiful. It's so beautiful now to be able to hold space for other women. Whereas before I wanted to fix everyone's problems. And now just knowing that that's not necessarily what people need. That's not what I need. Going through this whole journey of self-growth, self-love, self-pleasure, self-discovery, a lot of self, you mentioned how people don't do that work. I think people don't do the work because it is messy. It is uncomfortable. And sometimes it's easier to just stick with what, what we have and where we're at because we don't know the changes that might come from the growth could potentially be worse than where we're at. But that's what growth is. When you give yourself the opportunity to grow, there is always going to be shedding. If I could speak to a snake, I would ask it, is it comfortable for you to shed your skin like that every time? Or is there some discomfort? And I'm pretty sure there's some discomfort because you're being a snake, I imagine, is being constrained to this tight layer of skin that it needs to grow out of. 
And that's essentially what we need to do in order to move forward. And it was very challenging to read Kant. It was very challenging to read Vagina. Those books really challenged me to see the reality of my life. And what I mean by that is the reality of I'm just kind of writing coattails. I felt like I was writing coattails. I was walking in other people's paths. In the last episode, Farolina and I spoke about social media and comparing myself to other people on social media and really trying to live up to who they are, trying to be maybe sexual in the way they are or communicate with my partner the way they are. And it really didn't fit my life, my lifestyle, because I'm different. I'm a different person. So if you immerse yourself in the species you are instead of looking elsewhere, and I don't know exactly how to explain that, but this is the way it's coming up for me in my head. If you focus on the energy that your womb holds, we as women hold this feminine energy that rarely gets, if we're new to the feminine energy, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to look at your breasts and accept them for what they are. It's uncomfortable to look at your beautiful yoni because we're taught that it's gross, that we need to wash those juices off, that when we bleed, we can't let anybody know that we're bleeding But learning that it's normal and having an open dialogue with our sisters, with our blood-related or not blood-related, with our mothers, with our everybody, really, just anybody willing to have a conversation with you. I feel like I'm revisiting my roots with you on how, where this journey started. And I think it's very important for us really sharing our, the beginning of that journey because It's so easy for me to tell you how and where I am right now. I am in a passionately, in a fiery relationship with my partner. And we are communicating like we haven't in the last six years. We've been stuck in a six-year hole of resentment and disconnection. And it took that long for me to really decide to take the reins on my own sexuality, mental health, emotional health. And it was very uncomfortable. I would stick myself in the closet reading these books, reflecting in my journal, talking to you and Feralina. And I left my partner out in the cold. I didn't want to include him because I didn't feel like he would understand. Like your partner, Isadora, he was so confused. We sat down one night and had this conversation. It was like a two-hour conversation of are we going to work out? We've been together for almost 12 years. We have two children together. Are we going to work out? And we both mutually felt that way. We expressed it to each other. And all I could think was, well, you know, it would really suck for us to separate because of our children. But at the same time, I no longer feel tethered to you the way I used to feel like if you're not in my life as my partner, I'm going to melt. I'm going to die. I'm not going to survive. And I was empowered by all these women I've been listening to, their music and their message. And the books that I've been reading, the knowledge I've been gaining from our foremothers and the witches that were burned at the stake, they all left something. I feel very connected to those, in quotations, witches, because I truly believe that they were only considered witches because they were different and they believed things that were out of the norm. But going back to my partner and I, I didn't think he was going to understand. And so I left him out in the cold and he was very confused. And we were at some, at one point, we were just kind of at the point where we didn't like kissing each other. We didn't like being around each other. I preferred him to be out of the apartment so that I could just have alone time or privacy to talk to Isadora Yu and Feralina and just be with the feminine divinity. It takes me back to what Lisa Lister, she always talks about her Viking and how she's so grateful for all of the craziness he's put up with from her. And now that I'm that I've reconnected with my partner, I feel like, yes, thank you. Thank you for holding it, (laughs) hanging in there with me. And now we're growing together. Now he knows where it's easier for me to tell him where I'm at and He's less confused because I've just been communicating with him that 
I'm growing sexually and I want him to grow sexually with me. And it's all been just so beautiful. It is beautiful. It's crazy. It's beautiful. It's messy. And as difficult as it can be or challenging as it can be, I wouldn't really have it any other way. That's really what it evolved into for me was immersing myself in feminine culture really guided me on how to honor myself and my wishes like in all aspects of my life, but most importantly, my relationship. And I have a very amazing relationship. And at first I was like, you know, what am I even doing? Like, there's nothing wrong. He's amazing and yada yada. But then I realized like, no, there's stuff that I'm suppressing. I'm not speaking my voice on things. There's, and this is in, I would say mostly sexually. I think that was where our relationship is very communicative, except in that space. And so this journey has really helped guide me to speaking my voice in that regard, which has been really, really difficult. And I'm very positive that in a past life, I was persecuted for using my voice in some means. And that's why it's so hard for me now. But that's been a really beautiful awakening was to realize, you know, as a woman, I don't have to just deal with this or I don't have to want sex every single day or when I do it's okay to like be assertive about it you know and so there's just been really amazing magical shifts in that regard. Mm -hmm. Mine was also this journey has been primarily sexual suppression and dealing what hot so what my journey and immersing myself in feminine culture has helped me with the most has been helping my stunted sexuality. And what I mean by stunted sexuality is, I've mentioned it before, but I was raised Catholic and I'm Mexican and I come from a family that really doesn't talk about sex. This household can definitely, this as in my immediate family's household, not now, not speaking about my partner and I and my children, our children, more of the household I grew up in was not sex positive at all. And um, which we've talked about in, I think, episode four, or sorry, episode two, three, about uh, self-pleasure. So the immersing myself in feminine culture has helped me embrace the shame that I grew up with. I remember the first time I put on a thong. I was about 10. No, it was a pad. It was after the talk you have in elementary school in fifth grade about you getting your period and what you should do and how you will feel, which there's so much to be said about that. But I remember putting on a pad and feeling aroused. I didn't understand it at that time. I was 10. But now I know that the pad was probably rubbing my clitoris and it was it caused me to be aroused. And I felt shame. I felt embarrassed. I went and took it off. I just put it on just to see how it felt. And I was very embarrassed and nobody knew, but I was terrified about my mom finding out that I was aroused. And now I'm able to channel that shame, harness that shame and embrace it and use it to my advantage because I've been able to learn from people like Erica Badu, Janelle Monet. There's so many people, so many women out there that I listen to and learn from that are escaping my mind right now. But their lyrics and their messages about being goddesses, about being empowered, being able to be your own boss, not only in business terms, but in life, has given me the strength I need to be able to stand on my own and be able to not depend on my partner to know what it is that I want and need. That's my responsibility. That's our own responsibility. It doesn't now it doesn't make sense for me to hey, you as my partner should know that rubbing my clitoris will arouse me or massaging me before you even penetrate me will arouse. It's just it makes sense and I Shoot, it's escaping my mind what I was going to say. Ugh, I hope it comes back to me. Totally blanked. Thank you for sharing that. I love 
the story you shared from your childhood. And I remember being having those classes and things like being really excited about the idea of menstruation. I never like told anyone that because it felt weird because everybody else is so just like negative about it. But I just remember being really excited to enter that stage of life. And when it came, I was really excited, but it just gets really stifled by society. And my shame and my embarrassment grew around that. So thank you for sharing that story. That was really, really powerful to hear. And I love that you explore, like, if you think about it, like that was a way of you exploring yourself, even though you weren't understanding it at the time. So I'd like to kind of, you dipped into a few musical artists, and I'd like to kind of share just some of the things along the way that we've um, read or listened to or just ways that we've connected more in the feminine culture. That way, if people are interested, they can be guided a little bit. And I did want to bring up, I was thinking while you were talking just about my my emotion that I expressed earlier, and I just wanted to quickly note, you handled that so beautifully, and I appreciate your support and the space that you held for me. And if it brought up some uncomfortable energy in any of our listeners, that that's okay. And I honor and respect your feelings and to just kind of explore that within yourself. Because a lot of times we, you know, men are, men are fixers. And I know that whenever I get emotional in front of my partner, he's trying to figure out ways to make me feel better. Or he tells me not to cry because it makes him uncomfortable. And <laughs> lately I've just kind of, he's like, why are you crying? I'm like, because I fucking can. Like, <laughs> get off my areola, dude. Like, let me express my emotion. And he's, he honors me so much, so much more in that regard now. But I just wanted to touch on that and just to explore that within yourself and to realize that it's okay for the emotions to show. And it's so important. You know, tears are a way of like releasing toxins from the body. So crying is just a method of cleansing. And I encourage everybody to do it and honor yourself. Create a little energy bubble and hold space for yourself. Mm -hmm. And not being afraid to be with the negative as well, that negative energy, because what I've found, and, and I kind of remembered as you were talking, I remembered um, what I was going to say. Immersing myself in, in the feminine has helped me understand how I want to be spoken to during sex. <laughs> that has been one of the biggest ones. Because during sex, my partner and I would use words or names such as sex toy, porn star, and now that makes me just cringe. And I wouldn't know any better. I wouldn't have known any better if I hadn't allowed my sisters out there to teach me better. We're a very pornographic driven, and I'm not speaking for everyone, but we are a very pornographic driven society where immediately you get started and a woman is expected to already be aroused and wet and she squirts after like a quickie. And it's not like that at all at all. Yeah, I'm sure there are women like that who are constantly on just as men. But in my situation, I do need what is called foreplay. Now it is part of my sexual experience that I enjoy having. And I know that we're not always able to have that, my partner and I. But now I've been able to communicate to him that, look, I do not, and this was during sex, I do not like you calling me a sex toy or a porn star. And it's not your fault because I didn't know this either. But now as I'm learning it, I can communicate it to you. And of course, this isn't how smoothly it went. The conversation was like, uh, I don't really know how to tell you. And I'm pretty embarrassed, but I really feel like I need to tell you. And then I <laughs> dug my face in the pillow. He's like, OK, communicate it. So I told him I want him to stop using those words, those names. And he asked me, so what, what would you like me to call you? What, what terms would you like me to use during sex or in general? And <laughs> I said, you can use goddess or queen. And then I hid because I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed to actually be speaking up for myself sexually or in general and putting those boundaries out there. Now, it's so much easier. That was three weeks ago. You mentioned Isadora towards the beginning of this episode, how much we can grow in such a small amount of time. And it's practice. It, at first, it's going to be uncomfortable stepping into this, the space of empowerment and speaking up for yourself. It's going to get messy. Keep in mind that you're not the only one growing. Everybody around you is also growing. And that includes your partner. 
it's not necessarily going to be a safe space right off the bat. It's got to be created and you have to be open wombed in order for your partner to also have that open womb. And even if your partner doesn't have a womb, we all come from a womb. So it's all womb love. Okay, just put it out there. Um, but <laughs> so now he got he calls me a goddess. He treats me like a goddess. He treats me like a queen. And it's been magical, but it was uncomfortable at the beginning. I guess my message, my takeaway message is it's possible for you to heal. It's not easy and you're going to be shedding and that's going to cause a ripple effect for other people to shed. Giving yourself the safe space to shed will help you be or it has helped me be more compassionate and allowing for other people to have that safe space to shed as well. And it's okay to communicate with them. Hey, this is really uncomfortable for me. And it's a challenge, but I want to work through it with you. And if you're not there, if you're just starting to discover yourself, say that to yourself. And I'm sure that it's going to feel good. I want to say it feels good because I've felt my womb has felt supported and loved. And your womb will reciprocate that back to you in growth and in confidence and empowerment and, and, and. So I hope that provides some support to some of you. I love all of that so much. Oh my gosh, the whole time you were speaking, I was just like energetically jumping up and down. Like, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for bringing up the awkward conversations. Like those are going to happen. And I'm glad that you brought up like, if you're not ready to have those conversations, to have them with yourself. Because conversations that my partner and I have been having in the past month have been on my mind for months. But I wasn't ready. I knew. I was confused still about myself. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted. I just knew I wanted something different. And then all of a sudden it just became very clear. And I'm like, okay, I need to communicate this now. And things for a little while were confusing and they were awkward and they were uncomfortable. And like all of our interactions were just strange, my partner and I, but, or, and I should say, I finally opened up the conversation. I opened up the space for this growth. And our first conversation did not go perfectly and end in butterflies and rainbows. It almost made things more uncomfortable and awkward after that. But because I specified in our conversation that I don't want all of our communication to be tiptoed around. I don't want you to be afraid to hurt my feelings. Like when you go deep and when you get your feelings hurt in a respectful way, as long as it's being communicated respectfully, when you hear things you may not want to, it can sting a little bit, but you can also grow from that so much because like you said, we are both growing. Everybody's growing. And so like I may see things one way and then my partner's going to see things another way and it's meeting in the middle. It's working together. It's growing together, like you said. So I really want to highlight that because I've had some conversations recently with other women who are wanting, they're realizing, they're waking up, they're realizing that things need to change in their relationships and they don't know how to communicate it. And you really need to sit with yourself. I write a lot of notes, like when I'm having thoughts or like really strong feelings or emotions, I write it down and then I reread it every now and then to keep it fresh. And then also like your perspective could change on that. You could be feeling because we're cyclic. So you're, you could feel one way one day and then the next day you're like, okay, you know what? That really isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but it felt big at that time. So it's just a whole lot of reflection and just honest, honest communication. And I love the way that you're describing how you, <laughs> how you would say things and then hide. And it was just, it was so cute. And I just visualized it all in my head. <laughs> it was it was so great. So thank you for bringing all of that up because it's so important. And the work is important, but it's all in your own time and all in your own comfort and discomfort because growth is not comfortable. But those were some great points you brought up. <laughs> yes. And yes, yes to all of that. And I want to put it out there. I know Isadora, you would share about a couple you'd follow or you follow on YouTube about their polyamorous relationship. And, you know, we talk about there's certain aspects of relationships out there that are on social media or on different platforms that I envy. I'd envy, I should clarify, in the past. I'd envy because I want that. But then now that I am where I am and I'm in a harmonious relationship with my partner, I think to myself, damn, that wasn't easy for them to get to where they are 
I'm sure that they went through their own shit in order to get to where they are. And if if a couple doesn't, like let's say they're going through the shit and they don't make it together as a couple, then they weren't meant to be. Or maybe in the future they'll discover themselves and then reconvene. But it's possible. Just hang in there. Hang in there with yourself primarily. With yourself. Be true to yourself first and foremost. Everything else will fall into place after the challenges. I'm starting to understand. It's like, oh, this is why I secluded myself for so long from my husband. Because I needed to go deep with myself. I needed to touch myself to see, okay, this is what I like and this is what I don't like and this is why it potentially hurts when I have sex with my husband. Or you know, all of these uncomfortable questions would come up for me and I'd learn from them because I gave myself the time. It's crazy because now that I'm so madly in love with him, it's so hard to get that time with myself <laughs> and I'm craving to balance that. But At the same time, I understand that it's all a journey. It's a process. We're circular. And I'm just trying my best to go with the flow instead of freaking out and feeling like the world is moving so fast around me because it really does feel that way right now. As good as I feel, there's the dark side where it's like, I feel that I'm missing out on my sisterhood. I'm missing out on my tribe and I'm neglecting them. When in reality, it is what it is. I trust that Isadora, you have your own life, that Feralina has her own life and that we're still in it together. We're still, our collective is still together and it's seasons. There are seasons that we go through and we always end up finding our way back to each other. 100%. I feel like we are in alignment with our journeys we dove in and like got really raw and like into the nitty-gritty of it together and in the past month we've both made some beautiful strides in our relationships and so I understand what you're saying because I've been feeling the same way about missing out on my sisterhood but at the end of the day we're in these committed partnerships and that's not to say that you and I are not in a committed partnership because we are. But it's very important to nurture what we have here at home as well and for our children and having that strong family unit in that regard. And we know that we're always going to be there. And this topic came to me because I was, I literally texted you when I was in the library. And every time I go to the library, the first place I go to is the, you know, women's studies section or whatever. And so I was looking at all of these feminist books. And so I realized that I haven't read one since I finished Vagina, which was maybe in like May. And that that one just really like cracked my room wide open. That one had a lot of really powerful, emotional, uncomfortable things come up, but in a beautiful like growth factor way. And I just had to kind of take a break and like step aside from that. And I was getting a little concerned around my relationship and how negatively I was feeling towards it because it wasn't feeding my goddess ray like I wanted after reading the book Vagina. And that's by Naomi Wolf. And so it's been kind of beautiful, like working and nurturing on that relationship with my partner and being in a place now where I feel like I can reintroduce those books and you know more of the feminine culture I've I've stayed really strict with my music and by strict I don't really like using that word but that's the only word that was coming to mind is I obviously like hear different music at different points of my day but when I'm intentionally sitting down to listen to music I choose female artists and so I've stuck with that but I have explored different books because it was getting really intense. And sometimes I feel like we need that integration period where we just like step away, let it integrate into our life. And so that's what I did as far as books go. But if I'm in a bookstore, if I'm in a library, like that's the first place I go to. And so that's when I text you. Maybe it was like this energetic thing where we both feel like we're missing that aspect now. And so it was calling to us. And that's why we're doing this episode today. But you know, it just happened kind of organically. I have a mountain of books, female based sitting on my bookshelf. I'm eager to read, but it just doesn't feel like the right time. And that's okay. But, you know, reading cunt has just like opened my eyes and my awareness to the world in general. And I am so much more observant of like what is coming at me culturally. There's so much left to say, I feel. I know I got caught up with the relation, like how immersing myself in the feminine culture has 
been an advantage in my relationship with my partner, but I haven't mentioned anything about how it's been with other women. I am so much more accepting of other women now, no matter their differences. I'm not into makeup. I am not into heels, not into the super womanly. mm, I don't know how to properly say it. The glamorous. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Um, I'm very simple. And I've found now how to appreciate women as they are. Before I was more critical, I was definitely a lot more critical about like, oh, look, she's wearing so much makeup or damn, those are some high ass heels. Like you're going to break a break an ankle or, you know, just these little comments. And now I find them so unnecessary. They don't even come to mind. And it's because that quote in Cunt where she says, Jale, her friend, her I think it was a dance teacher she met who came from Iran and how devastated she was here about how horrible women treat each other. And that really opened my eyes and just really surrounding myself with nothing but women in the sense of media has helped me be more accepting of women from all walks of life, whether it be really young or older. And I find beauty in all body shapes now that I've accepted my own body shape. It just really changes your perspective. I feel that it's not only important for us as women to indulge in everything feminine in the sense of media and what we listen to and what we allow into our space, but also men. I think it's so important for everyone to really include more women and support more women businesses, however way we can support women ran, women owned items, services, everything, I think our perspective on women will change where it has for me at least. And I don't see it changing. I see it definitely balancing out with the masculine energy, but I don't see it changing in the way that I love women now. I honestly felt in competition, even though I had my stable partner, like I am committed, I am in a committed relationship with my partner. I'd still feel like, well, what is she doing with him? Maybe like I could be better. And it's like, what? Like, what the fuck, Venus? Like, that's not your space. So why are you even thinking of that? And it's gotten better. I love where I'm at. I love all of the women that have influenced me and continue to influence me, whether it be directly one-on-one or through earphones, I would love to challenge our listeners to try that, to really support women in general in every aspect of your everyday life somehow. It's so true. My perspective has shifted also. And you notice culturally, like in, in our music and shows, like they have TV shows made, like these reality shows of women living in houses together and fighting, physically fighting, verbally fighting each other. It's just women fighting over men. It's just ridiculous. And it's so over the top. And it's just part of the agenda to get us against each other because they know that when women come together, like you and I do, in a place of empowerment and self-love and self-respect, we can do radical things. And so just putting those suppressed seeing things out there into the world for us to absorb is just gross. And I'm so glad that I've come to a point of avoiding that at all costs <laughs> and shifting my perspective. And I've, I actually started working on that long before my immersion into feminine culture of if a negative thought came into my mind about another woman to shift that because my grandma, who is almost 92, is staying with us right now and spending so much time with her. She is a very judgmental person, but I understand that that is the culture that she grew up in and I'm just honoring her as much as I can, but it makes me really sad. It makes me really sad to hear the the judgments that come out of her mouth and the criticisms of herself. You know, at 92, come on, you've lived an amazing life. You don't need to be putting yourself down all the time. And so... I really, really make a conscious effort to shift any type of thoughts in that way like you were describing and it's really helped me and I I make it a point to do in front of my children too, always finding something to compliment 
because it's important and it's important to for our kids to witness women lifting each other up and for them to see me complimenting another woman or pointing out things that I like instead of something that's bothering me or something that I dislike if anything if there's anywhere for you to start I would say that would be it you don't have to dive into the books you don't have to shift your music preferences (laughs) Just make a conscious effort to lift each other up and to shift those thoughts that creep in unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a good segue to transition over to cycle time. What do you think? Oh, cycle time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Go for it. Cycle time. I'm on day 22 and life has been crazy and I have not been diving into my self-care routine as much. I have days where I'm like, wait a second, what what day am I on? (laughs) And that's life. And it's a season and it's okay. And I'm embracing it. And I text you this morning. I openly accept the challenges that are in front of me this season because it's all growth. And like I said last bleed, I was on. I was on, I was helping family, I was doing physical work, and I knew, like, (laughs) I'd be, like, in the middle of it, and then I'd feel, like, juicy, warm gush of blood, and just, like, yes, hi, I know you're there, I'm sorry I'm not honoring you the way that I should, and I would just, like, pause and talk to her, but I knew, I'm, like, you are gonna come back for me next (laughs) <laughs> and while she's not raging in a physical sense, it is all emotional. And I'm okay with that. And I'm loving it. And I'm giving myself the energy. And I'm trying to give myself as much space as I can. And I'm just rolling with it. And I'm really looking forward to see how this bleed goes. Not my last bleed, but the one before that was really, really deep and powerful. And I believe I was synced with the full moon. And it was just like transmission cosmic download and obviously last month I did not even open that space up for myself at all so I'm very curious to see how this upcoming bleed it's about six days away I love counting down to it and or to her I don't like calling her in it so yeah that's just what's going on for me right now you know just giving myself massive grace and eating dark chocolate peanut butter cups (laughs) (laughs) And letting the tears flow when they need to. What day are you on, Venus? So funny thing. I was going to say strange, but it's, if you think about it, it's not really strange. For a while there, we're tracking e- or keeping along with each other's cycle. So I knew for a good two or three months what day you were on. And it really helps, I feel, in our friendship, just knowing what season you're in. And it's just kind of fun and beautiful. And it's like a way to deepen our connection. And so I have not been doing that. And I have no idea what day you're on. Yeah, beautiful. All of it beautiful. And yes, it does deepen our relationship. I remember us trying to get something done for the collective. And it was just you and I kind of messaging, texting back and forth. And um, (laughs) you said something to the effect of maybe we should wait to like ask Fairlina after she's done with her pre-death and her bleed. (laughs) And it's beautiful to be able to take each other into consideration that way, depending on where we are at with our cycles and what we're feeling and holding that safe space that not resenting each other for oh well I'm doing more work than she is right now like she doesn't care about this project when in reality it has nothing to do with us personally nor with the project it's them it's the person it's our sister that's what it's all about a sisterhood is holding that safe space and knowing that we understand it's a cycle and you're going to come back to it when you do and trusting that I am on day 16 I started my bleed on the first day of the month, which is pretty cool because now I'm synced up with the days until the end of the month because (laughs) um, my last cycle, I forgot to mention it in the last episode, my last cycle was 47 days. And now one thing I'm super grateful for in knowing my body is not being afraid, (laughs) not being afraid that I'm pregnant every single cycle (laughs) because my cycles range from 40 to 50 days. So before on like day 30 something, I'm at the store, I'm at the 99 cent store Dollar Tree getting pregnancy tests, making sure I'm not pregnant. And now I'm like, no, I know my body's feeling normal. 
I feel the tension building up so I know my bleed. You know, I, I get these little bits and pieces that I'm able to be confident enough to say, I'm not pregnant. She's just taking her sweet time to explode through my yoni. <laughs> so I'm on day 16. I would probably say maybe an ovulation. It's been kind of challenging to know <laughs> whether I'm in pre-ov or ovulation because I've been having massive amount of sex and so I've been aroused even not being in ovulation. So I assume so I'm- juicy. <laughs> It's been really nice. And I just keep thinking, delicious. Really quick side tangent. For some reason, I really want to redo the lyrics of Fergie's Fergalicious, whatever that song is, the Fergalicious into Cuntalicious. So stay tuned for that because I'll probably perform it for you on the podcast for our listeners. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so day 16, I'm thinking ovulation. And I, like you, Isadora, I've been out of tune with my womb. I do uh, feel at certain times I do find myself talking to her because I'm like, I know I haven't paid attention to you as much as I would like to and just kind of reassure her that I haven't completely forgotten about her. I'm not neglecting her like I used to. I'm thankful for her as she has been guiding me through all of this growth and through my relationship with my partner and my sexual development and still keeping track of my cervix and my cervical mucus. And I have been falling off with my basal body temperatures in the morning. But like you said, just giving myself a massive, a massive amount of grace, which I wouldn't have before because I used to have these strict expectations for myself that I had to meet. And now it's like, no, this is just part of life. It's a season. I'm going to, I understand that I'm cyclical and I'm going to come back to whatever it is that I need to come back to when it's the right time. And download wise, the only thing that's coming up for me is I wrote something in my journal in huge print and it was the only thing I wrote that day. The only person that deserves all of you is you. I don't know where that came from at that time, but now looking back at it, I love, love it because the only person that deserves everything we have to offer from negative to positive and everything in between is ourselves. Because if we can accept that and honor that and embrace everything that we are, we are being role models to those people that need the role model, that need the example of what it is to have unconditional love. So that's where I'm at with my cycle and it feels really good and I thank you for everything you bring to my life, Isadora. I love that. That really like struck me in the womb, that quote that you read, the only person that deserves all of you is you. Like what? That's pretty like standard with your writings. (laughs) They always just like slap me around a little bit in such a beautiful way thank you for this today yeah do you have a reflection read nope (laughs) I didn't have one but the song that came to mind as we were mentioning artists the Janelle Monae song Queen with Erica Badu I'm just gonna read her lyrics really quick if our listeners haven't listened to that song I highly suggest it and it says am I a freak for dancing around Am I a freak for getting down? I'm coming up. Don't cut me down. And yeah, I want to be, want to be. Even if it makes others uncomfortable, I want to love who I am. Even if it makes others uncomfortable, I will love who I am. And then I'm going to go down. There's this other one where, oh, here it is. Are we a lost generation of our people? Add us to the equation, but they'll never make us equal. She who writes the movie owns the script and the sequel. So why ain't the stealing of my rights made illegal? They keep us underground working hard for the greedy. But when it's time pay, they turn around and call us needy. My crown too heavy like the Queen Nefertiti. Give me back my pyramid. I'm trying to figure Kansas City. There's another one, another part of the song that I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. Am I a freak because I love watching Mary? The entire song reaffirms the fact that I am not the only one who wants to feel sexy in her skin. I'm not the only one who likes to worship other women for who they are. Not worship as in idolizing, but worshiping and honoring and respecting women 
for what they are and who they are, no matter if they are a sex worker or if they are a stay-at-home mom who has not looked at her breasts in years. I really challenge our listeners to go out there and embrace the feminine culture in some way, shape, or form. I assure you, you will get something out of it, whether it be uncomfortable or it might be uncomfortable. At the end of the day, though, you're going to find comfort in that discomfort because you're going to discover something about yourself. And yeah. Yes. Yes. Janelle Monet rocks my cunt. Yes. 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 So that is our, that is our episode, but some announcements to close out the episode. I know I've been mentioning the giveaway for the Handmade Felt Cunt. Finally, I have some details put together. I'm just going to read it out of my journal. I think it's easiest. So win a Handmade Felt Cunt. Enter to win a cute little cunt by leaving us a review on any of the platforms you listen to us on. If the platform you listen to us on doesn't have the option to leave us a review and you want to be entered in the giveaway, head over to our Instagram account, which is c3.orgasm, and leave us your love on there. We'll be running the giveaway for a month or maybe more, depending on how many entries we get, to give our listeners the opportunity to enter. And stay tuned for more details as this is the first giveaway we run, so there's plenty of growth to be done in regard to successfully executing a giveaway. And I also want to be transparent with our giveaways. The reasons I foresee having giveaways are, one, incentivizing you as our listener to engage with us, which means our podcast gets more exposure. Because remember, there's these things called algorithms. So unless you have thousands of followers, you don't get seen. So we need your help to get our support and community out there. We only have about 70 Instagram followers, which no longer has power over us, the number itself. And we are grateful for everyone who does support us. But the downside of it, again, is that we don't get seen. Another thing about our giveaways is it's our way of expressing our gratitude to you, our supporters. As much as we'd love to give you all something more than our voices and perspectives realistically, that isn't a financially feasible option. So doing giveaways is, I feel, a good place to start manifesting more ways to show our gratitude, love for you out there listening to us. And uh, giveaways also give us the opportunity to collaborate with other women. We all have a gift to share, so I'm excited for us to begin lining up more cuntalicious magic to offer you in exchange for your support. Trades are where it's at. My hope for our collective is to diminish the power money has over our lives, creativity, and wealth by proving to ourselves that we can still make things happen, bring our projects to life, and help them thrive by collaborating trading and having each other's backs we can do it this podcast and the c3 collective is not about us as individuals but about us as a species let's grow in womb love whether you have a womb or not because we all come from a womb and lastly just a word about the cuntalicious creator of the cunt we are giving away amanda she is a dear friend of mine she is a badass rad woman artist and mother Her and I met on Instagram about a year ago. We hit it off and have stayed in touch since my quitting social media. The only bummer about my friendship with Amanda is that we live on opposite sides of the country. (laughs) Ha ha, cunt tree, get it? And I wish we were neighbors. Thank you, Amanda, for your contribution to the success and livelihood of this podcast and collective. If you'd like to follow or get to know this rad woman, you can find her on Instagram under sloth mom 57 sloth mom 57 thank you for hanging in there with us for that little announcement and just as always check out our show notes to support the beautiful humans we mentioned in this episode and if you need to reach out to us we are available at c3.orgasm at gmail.com or on instagram at c3.orgasm yes yeah, yeah. I love you so much. I love you too. Thank you for being here. I love you all so much. Thank you, listeners, for being there, hanging out with us. Thank you. You're amazing. Mwah. Ovary out. Wah, wah. <laughs>
scared for you to think.